Welcome, everybody, to the Fall Line with KS and Company. We have the coach here with us tonight with Angelo and I. We have Sue Kramer, our examiner coach. How's it going, Sue? It's going great. Good, good. I see your Stokely's are in the background there. They are. Aren't they pretty? They are pretty. <laughs> They're pretty. Angelo, what's happening, man? You know, I'm looking at those Stokely's now. They're, Sue, they're little. How long are they? They're 152. You'd like them. <laughs> that hurt. Okay. That hurt. Yeah, I'd put them on my hands and ski down on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you those skis are longer than that snowboard you're riding, though. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Well, they, 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 they still pack a punch, though. It's oh, a good I, ski. I've seen yeah. them punch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's all that snowboard riding for there, Angelo? Um, well, as you, as you well know, Dave, I have snowboard and I'm mm. also right now getting ready for my level two exam. Oh, just, I thought you were going for like Dev Team or ETS on snowboard or something. Oh my, well, you haven't seen the <laughs> snowboard or you wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> oh man, gotta love it. So we have Sue Kramer here. I know Angela and I will tease each other all night, but, and hopefully Sue will too. You can make fun of us too. Everybody else does. I mean, Matt and Jeb did. I um, will. Yeah. But we, we tend to like to start these as we've done our first few podcasts, chatting a little about, about us in terms of you. You know, I hear people have heard about us when we started skiing. We asked the guys the last few weeks. And I mean, when did you start skiing? When did the journey start? Was it, and was it with family? Was it on your own or, you know, lessons? Like, were you that lesson person? Um, actually, no, <laughs> I wasn't. Um, and I can't believe that you're actually making me say this, but, um, <laughs> I am from New Jersey. Oh. Yeah. And, um, we started coming up to Vermont where I live and have lived for 20, over 25 years. Um, when I was six years old. So we were the weekend, you know, the weekend family. We did lessons on occasion, but it's interesting. Um, that back then I recall of the maybe one or two lessons that we did, it was a family lesson. And I think what's interesting about it is, you know, now with everything that's going on, that's, that's the lesson that's happening. Mom, dad, you know, brothers, sisters of different ages, abilities, that, that was us. And, um, I do remember, I will admit it that I think the pace of it was going a little slow. <laughs> so I recall taking off. I was just done with the lesson. <laughs> and, and I think that's what started my journey of exploring the mountain on my own. And, you know, my parents were parents of the 60s, 70s. So they were fine with just letting me go. And that's how I learned was on my own. And I've got two older brothers. So I followed them wherever they went. And now they get to follow me. So it's full circle. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I'm like, I bet you they're not in front of you anymore. No. Your brothers, no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. So, so was it instant you were hooked or was it something that grew as the family went? And then, you know, to take time, like you said, you know, lessons were slow. When was it like, this is it, man. I am never quitting skiing. Um, it's a, I think it's a great question because it, was never just about skiing. And I think that's what people say about skiing, the industry, the lifestyle, the things that we're missing now with being with people is like the APRI stuff and mm. getting together. So we always came up with other families. Yep. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> it is that you got in that glass. Yeah. Uh, coming up with other families, my lifelong friends, um, we ski together and they've moved up here. They've got their kids in the Bromley Outing Club program. I've coached them. It's this, you know, generations have gone by and it's the sledding at night. It's the apre, apre, apre. It's the <laughs> family dinners. It's the getting up and just doing it and being exhausted and then driving back. Um, that it was all that. So that all happened around the activity of skiing. And, and again, back then we had a, I do recall we had a station wagon and it was my parents, my brothers, the luggage, and then me in the back. 
And so I just got to <laughs> sit out and look at the scenery, listen to the music that was playing. And I got to dream and fantasize about the lifestyle. And I think I was about 10, 10 years old when I decided that I was going to move up here to Vermont. And, um, and that was it. That was my goal. Huh? So, yep. I haven't gotten beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here still. Oh, God, the Jersey girl. I am. Oh, now would that be the nickname, yeah. Angela? Or what do you think? We got to come up with a good Jersey kind of. I'm lingo. fine with it. I'm. I've come to terms with it. You guys do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Payback I'm might good. be tough on us, though. She could be tough on us as a coach, man. It, she could give us some. It, it's going to be tough anyway, so we may as well get some digs in. <laughs> did, did you do? Did you do the um, I, I, picture? 1987. Mm -hmm. Did you do? Did you have the satellite dish on the front of your head, like the big hair or hairspray <laughs> thing like that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was not living in um New Jersey at that point. So, no, I did not. <laughs> oh god. But let girls. me tell you something else. <laughs> let me tell you something else about being from New Jersey is that we 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 can uh talk back. So, just be careful. Mm -hmm. Oh, careful. Okay. Hey, tell us about the job in the yeah. skate park or in the skate shop rather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yes. So I was, um, I think I was about 23 and living in Connecticut. And, um, I actually was working at sundown, ski sundown at that time and was going to art school, doing a master's for ceramics. And as a part-time job was working in a uh, skate shop, but they also sold like high end running stuff and lacrosse stuff and all after school sports, but I was one of the people that was putting together decks and sending them out to little, you know, teenage boys on Long Island who had stole their parents' credit cards. And um, so it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, so you do a lot of pottery and um, I, I do. do some woodworking. You do a lot more pottery than I do woodworking, but I like to turn bowls and stuff. And things like that. Bowl of turning in the wood shop is my favorite, which is somewhat, I think, similar to your pottery stuff, some of it. But um, you did a really neat thing in our Ed Staff training. We did virtual with um, where you made a standard. You were making, I think, a bunch of mugs for a project mm -hmm. or someone, a customer, and you had to make the standard. And I thought that was really neat how you connected the pottery to um, to skiing and, and kind of what we were doing as, as examiners and Ed Staff. I mean, how much... Are you able to bring from your pottery and that in terms of creativity and just the process, maybe? Um, another great question, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but but I Angelo think Angelo wrote all my questions for me. He really yeah. you've, been I, pra you've been practicing, like, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like I think like skiing, it's so it's so multi multi-layered. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think for me, some of it has to do with the space itself, like my studio. And, and maybe you can relate to that where you, you walk into your wood shop and it's just a different environment and you become this, this other, you're a creative person, you know, both you guys are super creative people. And so you understand that you get into a different mindset um, when you're, when you're working with a different medium and i could say that when we're working with people on snow that's that's one medium you you kind of channel this one side of your creativity and then when you're working with you know actual material that's a different kind of um creative action i guess and it gives you the chance to you know obviously mold mold something like we we mold people skiing we mold their um, we mold them on their path to certification or, or we want to, we want them to be, you know, the best that they can be. And it's like, for me, when I'm working in the studio, there's always that, while I talk about the standard, I'm not a machine, right? Yeah. So every single one of those mugs that I made, even though I had a template and I had the stamps and I had all this stuff, not one of them came out the same. And that's super frustrating <laughs> for me. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. at the same time, people don't expect 
them to be identical. Mm. You know, and it's like each one of us, each of us as educators, if we were all the same, there would be no need for all of us, you know, just hit record and then just blast it everywhere. But, you know, people go to each one of us for a different reason because we connect with people differently. And, and so I, I think that there's an appreciation for, even though, even though there's a, a standard, um, there's also an appreciation for individuality, just like what happens in my studio. And I'm doing this because it's right there. Right there. There's a door there and it's right there. Yeah. Um, so I also think that it gives me, um, a chance to do something completely different, you know, from skiing where skiing, I love, I love ski teaching. I, I love sharing that passion. And this is just, it's another, it's another way to express my, my ideas about the environment. You know, I may see, I'm right now is a time of year where there's a lot of gray, for example, mm. you know, and people don't, people say, Oh, it's just another cloudy day. But to me, there's like 10 different grays. And what can I do with those colors? Can I mix glazes and combine them so that it really, um, it conveys what I see or what the day feels like to me. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's the yeah. stuff that goes from one side to the other side of my head. Yeah. I mean, it does to me because, uh, you know, I've been able to have the chance of watching you work and, and work with myself too, in terms of training and that. And like when we were in Austria and you were doing the CS1 and we were over there two years ago, it was, you know, you can see, I, I was kind of looking at it and going, look at the way she's just changing the environment a little bit. Just maybe it's speed or just the line people were skiing. I don't think people take those little things as big things, but that's kind of what you're saying. There's 10, 15 different grays, same thing as 10 or 15 different lines. You could ski where you're skiing from mm-hmm. or different speeds to play with something or a certain movement. And I can see Angelo scratching his eyebrow. He's got something. Whenever he scratches his eyebrow, he's got a great thought. Damn, I just had an Or itch. maybe not this time. <laughs> 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 I've stumped him. Wow. Uh, you know, no, I, I actually, I had a thought. Um, see? That, that, that was what, that was the itch. It was the thought. Um, no, I, I, I get it. Um, I think about like I, I used to think of uh, when I was in teaching in public school, I thought of uh writing curriculum and delivering curriculum as art. That's how I, I viewed it. Because, you know, somewhere in my background I was encouraged to think that way by my family, my mom, my friends. It was just part of our our culture growing up. So I didn't see curriculum as any different. And I and um you you have to look at the content. I think it's the way I looked at the content is the way I think you were ta- what you were talking about when you look at the medium. So it's like mm-hmm. d- depending on what colors you're interested in or what the material the actual material is. Is it clay? Is it pen and ink? Is it a wooden bowl? Um, and I would think of things you know like if I taught environmental science, so depending on the concept, it would sort of dictate my approach with the curriculum. So if it was like a circular concept, a cycle, like water cycle, as an easy example, you know, you have to come back to the starting point. Otherwise you don't have the cycle, you know, whereas if you're, you're dealing with another process that's linear, that has a beginning and an end, you approach that differently, you know? And I, I think that's true in art. And I think it's true in, in ski lessons, you know, you, you can tell pretty early on if, if somebody's, going to make you know what what sort of progress somebody's going to make with with a new idea in in skiing or snowboarding so if if it doesn't look like they're going to progress all that much you may start to think in terms of i i'm i'm going to have to come back to this like this is we're going to have to revisit this it's a, this is going to be a a cycle or at least a spiral you know um whereas you have an idea and somebody picks it up right away and you know you need to do something uh different next time that in in my head is a little bit more linear. And so I I can see an overlap there between art and teaching and curriculum and ski coaching and all those things. Um what um does that make any sense at all? I think so. Yeah, let's leave it there. <laughs> I think no 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 I take think, a drink. Take a drink. Hey social. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> for, me, for me, what I'm thinking about is, and, and I'm using the word, it has a negative connotation. And Angela, we may have had a chat about this word, um, man- manipulate. We did have that chat. It was a good right? chat. Yep. Right. It was a good so, chat. Mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember why and when we had it. Okay. I don't remember when, but... <laughs> But what it's about is manipulating, manipulating the environment, manipulating the material, manipulating um, um, this, like the content. Mm-hmm. So I think what you're talking about is the content into into um, a framework. Mm-hmm. And for for clay, it's manipulating the clay itself. But um, you know, how can I take an idea and funnel it through? the medium how can i take the skier or the skill set that this person is presenting to me and manipulate the environment to a a certain outcome Mm -hmm. right and that's i i think there's some crossover there while i'm not really aware of it i haven't really thought about it until this second (laughs) (laughs) but that is i think there's a lot going on with that um so when that's, I'm that's what we do on Chaos and Company. So we broaden horizons. <laughs> oh. So um, okay, welcome. That's that. welcome. Yeah. Um, Unless sure no, how I feel about that. Well, yeah. you think, think about it and tell us later. But I, yeah, and I do remember the conversation now. It was like in an exam situation, or, or it doesn't even have to be an, in an exam. When you're trying to elicit a particular response from someone to see if, if they have it, you want to you wanna give people every opportunity you can to prove to you they have it if you're looking for it. And, and, you know, I think one of the strongest things an educator can do is realize that, that very often you're a bad, you, you're not, the questions you ask might be clear to you, but maybe mm-hmm. they're not clear to everybody else. So you have to take a couple different approaches to trying to get the same idea or the same demonstration out of somebody. So you manipulate, we talked about manipulate, which means to, 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 to change with your hands, like, Manos is Latin for hand. It means to literally get in there and tweak something with your hand. You manipulate the environment to make sure that people have an opportunity to demonstrate what it is you're hoping to see. Right. Know? But then as an examiner, as a school teacher, as a clinician, et cetera, et cetera, um, if you're able to do that, you you have a pretty good idea whether or not they they have it. Well, and you also have to, as the clinician you have to have a really solid understanding of what you're working with mm-hmm. so for example um you know race race coaching cuz i do some of that too um you can that, that's kind of you an can understatement. take brushes <laughs> you know you could take brushes or dye or gates or stubbies and you manipulate the the learning environment in that way. And one of the things that I love to do is to set something and based on what I'm seeing, based on the performance, you know, go back in and manipulate or change, change the course to get a better outcome. You know, if I'm seeing that all these athletes are coming low on the line and I want a different outcome, then I try to change the course to get a better outcome. Right. And then we'll talk about it afterwards. So, you know, this is where I I come in with, it's not always necessary to, to feed people feedback after every turn, you know, we have to give them a chance to, to um, digest and experience and kind of mull over what they've have sensed in their own bodies with their eyes, you know, all that. So to me, there's some crossover with um, coaching as well in this conversation. So with the, uh, the race stuff that the, that was kind of the understatement of the, I'll just say the year, I won't say the century, but I mean, I do a little bit of race coaching. So the year's like 
the year's like seven she's, she's, seven days old. It's been it's been this year for yeah. seven. Like give her more credit and, than that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like okay, I do a little race coaching. I only you know. Well, I'm not. I like um, my program is closed right now, so it, that's how it feels a little okay, bit. Okay, so so she hasn't done any right now because they're closed. She's only you know work with I don't know how many kids and how far are they going. Oh, she's even had some coaching with some of the U.S. ski team, right? Yeah, it's pretty neat oh. to see. See them up on uh, in the World Cup stage. Not that they remember who I was, but that's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, but, but you did. You were cool. doing some yeah. of the you were some of the U.S. team on the development team or whatever yeah. for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When, did you, when did you do that? Like you actually did that? You can tell people. Um, that was <laughs> the summer, June, June, July of eighteen, maybe yeah. twenty eighteen. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. That was exhausting. It was exhausting. Why was it exhausting? Because <laughs> it was just exhausting. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, it was great. It was yeah. great. Um, but uh, it was very rewarding. You know, great to work with um, athletes at that skill level and to just to gain some insight into what their um, challenges are. And when I say challenges, I mean not just skiing, but but how they treat themselves as athletes and how they balance the whole training day and all the pressure that they're that they're under to perform. So, you know, there's a lot there's a lot going on for them. And these are these are kids that are in their, you know, late teens, 16, 17, 18, 19. You know, I, I remember what I was doing and it wasn't that. So <laughs> Hanging out in skateboard shops. I was just going to say, <laughs> like a punk rock. Hey, yeah. um, so I, I have a question then. Um, a lot of our members, a lot, a lot of Eastern members that I talk to, a lot of people on my snow sports uh, school at my home mountain have a perception of, you know, examiners and ed staff. Like, like there's just nothing to improve. You know, matter of fact, I'm pretty sure when I met. The first time I met examiners, I my I it was Bob and Lanny and and Pete Stransky and and um and Steve Moore. And I thought they all lived in a dormitory together somewhere and just like <laughs> flew 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 in they a in, a, in a helicopter and, and oh, man. these events and then right. whisked away. But that's not the reality of it. So the, this long this is a long way of asking this question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. You worked with athletes at that level, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I, and I think our members would be interested in hearing this. When you look at the, the Eastern examining crew and you, you've worked with athletes at the U.S. ski team level, what will you bring from that experience to make the examiners better? We need to get in better shape. Well, <laughs> I didn't say it. You need, yes, you I did. Didn't say it. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Come on. You're going to say Every it. Every morning. What's... The You're last couple it. trainings, <laughs> the last couple trainings when Sue wasn't even the coach yet, but it was like, okay, we have voluntary training tomorrow morning at That's seven right. o'clock before. And voluntelling you. Voluntary. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Voluntelling because we will take attendance. Right. Um, well, one thing, one thing that I will say is that, you know, these are with the, with the development team athletes, they weren't, um, super motivated in the mornings either to to do their workouts and their stretches and they I, I don't know I think that they, they could have done better and I shared that observation um with uh, the people that I needed to say that to and they agreed with me that that the there was some aspect of uh I don't know if it was cultural or discipline that needed to be improved. And I think it's getting better, but it's a slow process. And I would say the same for us that I think that I would like to see us take ourselves as um, professionals a little more seriously. And, um, I, you know, no, we're not, we're not there. Just like those mugs, the, the standard, you know, my, my attempt is to make each one of them as perfect as possible, but you're never going to get perfect. And so it's like, uh, one of the things I did study a little bit of Asian philosophy. And one of the things that I took away from 
studying Buddhism is that you're never going to get that. You're never going to get perfect because it doesn't exist for us as, as human beings. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive for it. And it doesn't mean that um, we should shy away from our potential. And so that's a long way of saying, Angelo, that one of the things that I want to bring to our staff of coaches is um, giving us the time and forum to think about our own potential as individuals and what is it that we need to do? What do I need to do to reach my potential? What do you need to do for your potential? Dave, what do you need to do for your potential? What is it that you're in this for? And, you know, when you retire, because we all will retire at some point, what do we want to leave behind? And that to me is, is a really big deal for me. That's my, that's what I want. Do you think your job is easier now that we're talking in terms of the learning connection model? Like you no. have, you have categories to put these things in where we need improvement. So I was she on was the I thought, I thought no. she was going to say yes. Like, I you know, when I had the conversation with Matt in the fall and he's like, Oh, you know, we've got the national webinars. They'll be fine. It'll be, you know, great. You know, you'll slide into it this year. It's all set up. I was on the chairlift today and um, I'm, I'm by myself because I'm working with one, one athlete. So we have to go by ourselves. And the one word that came to my mind very quickly was anvil. And I feel like an anvil landed on my shoulders <laughs> with this. <laughs> and I say that because it's a thing. Like the learning connection model is it's a thing and it's a big deal. And it's, um, and now we have to, now we do what we do, but it's all, it's all funneled through. And it's a great thing, right? The learning connection model is a great framework for us. I think in some ways it makes it easy, but in other ways, whatever it is that we do needs to be, you know, through this lens. And I think it might be easier for some people, harder for others. That will be, um, we'll find out. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if those of us who are more geared toward like um, thinking like this, will it be easier for us to kind of perform to the learning connection model and the, and the standards or will it be harder? You know, what, will we feel the freedom to go off the page a little bit or not? And just how much practice will it take for us to feel like, I want to feel like I am me when I'm in front of a bunch of people. And I want to feel like I'm coaching my, my style in front of you guys. Right. And so I think there's going to, there may be a little bit of a struggle in, in the beginning. Um, to getting used to referring back to these, you know, the fundamentals, the learning out, the specific learning outcomes, the assessment criteria. In the end, I mean, we're doing a huge service to our organization, the professionalism of it, our membership. You know, it's all good. It's, it's all amazing. I personally feel like there's an anvil on my shoulder. <laughs> shoulders <laughs> so so i i've kind of a two-part question um which there this is kind of um it'll be a challenging question i think because i don't i don't know the answer but as I if the other one wasn't well no I, I, this this relates <laughs> to like such, our, it's it's that so you're having trouble asking I mean, it well yeah <laughs> because like i i when um when i think of our, my training for the year we have our ed stack training so we we come into the fall and we all get together and um have our training and but to me that's not really the end of training that's that's like when we put you know we get the coaches are there and those that are working in the groups for our ed staff and we go out and do our things and there's a lot that happens in those two or three days but then during the season when we see each other even if it's yeah. in the small pods even if it isn't training we go out to dinner and say the three of us and a couple other ads ed staff members there bob and troy or maybe even matt's there or somebody and we're chatting about stuff and this year we don't have that connection 
like we've been doing a lot of webinars, which is great. And we were all thirsty for them. We had a couple this week with the Ed staff. I mean, we had what, probably almost a hundred with the two webinars this week that were mm-hmm. on. Some did both nights, I heard. Nice. Um, I guess I'm slacking. I only did one that I thought we only I did only did one. one. Sorry. Okay, good. <laughs> but I mean, how much are you use as the coach thinking about um, that it's not just the training that was missed, it's that the staff is missing those little connections where they're at dinner and they're chatting or they're at breakfast because you know, I mean, we're always thinking about what's going on and how, I mean, to me, that's part of the training for me during the year is meeting with the different staff members to do that. I'm just curious is like, I know you with the anvil on your shoulders, how much of that's on your mind of how do we catch up? That's, and then that's also our members also are going to be a little deprived of stuff this year because certain places, I mean, what are your, I mean, that's a tough one. That's, I know. But that's the second anvil on my shoulders. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's becoming, um, ever, I'm I'm becoming ever aware of the lack to your, exactly to your point that, that we get together for a day and a half and we, we get a lot of stuff. We hear a lot of information, right? Um, and even in that day and a half, it's a lot of information and it's some sharing, but it's not a ton. And I think to your point, so much of it happens in during lunch, um, at dinner on the Hill in exchanges, brief exchanges. It's, it's amazing. And, and I don't know that there's a way, I don't know that we can completely, um, replace it with, you know, with this forum. I don't know. I don't know. We can, we can try and I'm working on it. Um, things, things to come. Yeah. But, um, I, I don't, I don't think that you can replace it. And I think we're, we're recognizing now just what we, what we're missing yeah. by not being, by not being able to be with each other and, and gather. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing in that way. Yeah. Cause when, cause when you say that, that, you know, you want the staff to, kind of step up a little bit and think about the job a little more professionally. And it's not that they don't, but it's like, I, I hear what you're saying. And I feel a little bit that I need to pay attention a little bit more. And I know I connect with different staff members. Um, we had a call after the call on uh, Monday night. We literally just, there was 10 of us that got together on a, on a Google meet call and chatted and we chatted about other stuff other than just skiing, but, but it definitely, the, the stuff dribbles yeah. in and it's amazing on a two hour. Yeah just hanging out how much actually is part of what we do every day when we're teaching skiing. Yeah. You know, I, I've had the opportunity to, you know, participate in some um, race camps and just with uh, regional coaches and, and it's the same thing. You, you know, the kids have gone their curfews, you know, like at nine o'clock and you're hanging around and you're, you're just talking shop. You're just, exchanging thoughts, mm-hmm. ideas, and it's not really, you know, nobody sits down and says, okay, let's talk about this. You just end up talking about stuff and um, exchanging, exchanging ideas. And you walk away from that. You know, you hope that you walk away from it a little with a broader, a broader idea of what you're doing, of what you want to do, of maybe you can tweak what you do a little bit. Um, you know, so. I, I, I don't think that there's a replacement for that. And, yeah. and I'm glad that we're doing these things and I'm glad that we're able to offer, you know, the webinars that we are and the panel discussions and the round tables, because even just these exchanges are, are, they're great for people and for us. <laughs> yeah. I know it is for me. I mean, how yeah. long did we talk on Monday night until everybody else left? We were still there chatting. I got yelled at the next morning because I went to bed pretty late. We were chatting yeah, forever. It was, a little, it was a little too long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the um and what what you what you guys are are talking about now, a couple of weeks ago, I think, on some calls we were on came up. Um, were were we gonna lose members this year because people weren't able to ski as much or you know connect as much and um my experience the last couple of weeks and and i i I can't believe i'm about to say this our snow in southwestern pennsylvania has been largely terrific 
since we opened. And I know you guys have had some struggles in New England, but um, what, what I'm seeing, I, and I had that concern that people were going to lose interest in, uh, you know, membership and things like that. But um, it seems like most people have had the opportunity. Most people who wanted to have had the opportunity to get out on snow. People are enthusiastic about clinics. Uh, and I'm just talking about my, well, I guess I'm not talking about my home hill because I, I've had members reach out to me, people I know from other areas, people I don't know are messaging me on Facebook and whatnot. Um, we have, I have 14 people on my snow sports school right now who want to do level two Alpine this year, mm. which is the biggest cohort we've had in, in recent memory. And mm. I feel like people are really, really enthusiastic about being involved, staying connected. And, and I hope that carries through, you know, hopefully, um, you know, no, no major, uh, viral outbreaks, uh, super spreader resorts and that kind of thing. Cause if, if what, if what's happened the last month in my experience continues, I think, you know, hopefully next year things will be more normal ish. Um, I think it's going to explode. I think enthusiasm is, is big and people do want to connect and slide around together and, you know, continue to do what we do. So I don't know, just. I hope when we look back on this year, year, year and a half that we go, wow, that it really did. It was hard. You know, it was terrible, but it really did move us forward. Right. I think it's definitely right. shown I th us I think what, that's what works for bad. us. <laughs> no, I was just yeah. going to say, it, it definitely shows me what I miss for training and my own development. I can tell you that. <sighs> I, I'll just, I'll just say that it, it makes me think back about the opening question. Um, from you, Dave, about, you know, what brought me into the, into skiing to begin with, it wasn't just the, the sport of skiing. It's a lot of the other stuff too. And, yeah. and even when you're skiing with a group of people, it's that you're sharing, you, you know, you've got that common, common experience, the common struggles of, of having some teammates that you're going for a certification or a tryout with, you yeah. know, that that you i think there's a little bit that you miss in a screen um mm -hmm. and i think that what's happening now is people are recognizing how important it is yeah. so i'm i'm excited to see so many people out on snow i'm excited that there's families that have moved up they've been able to move up their parents are you know doing remote um work and some of the kids like i skied with some kids um yesterday who uh pleaded with the principal of their school and said that skiing is is really important for them and that and the principal agreed that the kids uh brother sister could um ski three times a week in the mornings so I think that's, that's awesome. pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I was in elementary school, I got out early. I had to get out of school early to go skiing. Well, they probably kicked you out. Well, they, they did They're kick like, me out quite a few times. Get out. <laughs> just, just, just get out. Just Hey, we want to pick them up early. Get out. We want to pick them. We want to pick them up early. <laughs> We're going to take them skiing. Great. How many days can you do that, please? Make so. this child move. <laughs> yeah. So um, the executive producer is speaking in my ear. I guess we'll, uh, we're going to take just a little break which you guys will just be able to do a couple clicks on YouTube or Spotify to watch the, uh, the next episode with Sue. We're going to do this in two parts. We're just going to refill the glasses, take a break. We'll be right back.